Okay, Google. Let's take a bunch of photos. No camera app installed. What the f Hey guys, Daddy Full here. Welcome back. So it's been about a month since I've gotten the Pixel 2 XL. I've been using it exclusively. This thing has not disappointed me at all. So far, most of the time, it's been smooth sailing. Of course, not everything is perfect. I've encountered some, you know, bugs, especially with the Google's photo app, wherein if you try to edit a photo and then you save it, it'll go back to this loading screen and it'll stay there until you kill the app itself. But other than that, it's been really smooth. It's been really great. I love using it. So with this episode, I wanted to do something a little bit different. Uh, I spend a lot of time using the camera. I'm not really a photographer. I do love taking photos. I wanted to see how far I could push it, how far I could push myself, how far I could push the camera. And one of the things that I really enjoyed one of the things that really impressed me with this uh, camera is the low light capabilities. So I figured what better way to test this out than by taking a bunch of photos indoors wherein you don't get a lot of natural light. I convinced my daughter to help me out by saying that she could use her tablet while I take pictures of her, which actually worked out pretty well because she sat there for the most part. So with the videos you'll see, I try to change the lighting condition, I tried different scenarios or different angles. You know, my strategy was pretty simple. Take as many photos as you can and hopefully one of them or a few of them will come out being all right. I thought it would be fun to set up the scene with a cozy atmosphere. So I just had the lamp in the corner as my main light source. In outdoor shots, I usually face away from the sun because it's hard to get a proper exposure of the subject. But this camera performs really well, even with a strong light source directly in front of you. Now, maybe it's because I don't usually take shots like this, but I did notice some crazy lens or dot flares that are quite easy to replicate. Lens flares are natural, it's just that they seem very obvious and I guess pronounced with this camera. It's not really a deal breaker, I just thought it was something interesting. I tried a few different lighting scenarios as well by adjusting the lamp. I already knew that the camera performs really well in low light, but I wanted to reduce the noise as much as I can without making the scene too bright. I took some shots using the built-in flash, but most of them were not what I was looking for. It's easy when your model is preoccupied. You just keep still. I think the hardest part was the composition. Finding the right angle and framing to make a photo a lot more interesting was definitely a challenge. Now it's time to go through all the photos and hope that my spray and pray tactic paid off. I found the default editing software pretty adequate as it gave me enough control for tweaking the lighting and the color. I do wish that they had more in terms of transforming. Right now, it seems to be just the standard cropping and rotating. At the end, I had fun and enjoyed experimenting with the camera, especially considering that all I had to do was point and shoot. I spent much less time tweaking with the settings and more time snapping photos. Here are some of my favorites. All things considered, I think I did pretty well. Definitely a significant jump on how smartphone cameras performed just years ago. Anyways, let me know if you guys have any tips or ideas for photos. I'm excited to be doing more of these in the future, that's for sure. Here's a random tip. You can easily toggle your phone's volume settings from normal to vibrate by pressing on the sound icon. That way you don't have to keep on pressing the volume rocker all the way up or down. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys soon.